Hi, thanks for spending some time with me today. In this episode, we're going to continue on with this 1998 Mitsubishi Eclipse. It's been a long road of getting it refreshed. I've uh, enjoyed sharing a lot of that with you, especially the undercarriage, which I'm getting finished up finally today. So I'm going to do the brakes, I'm going to put the exhaust back on, I'm going to put the drive shaft back in, and a few other little things, and finally button up the underneath of this. So, without further ado, let's get to work. Time for some brake assembly. And this is the rear brakes, and in this car, unlike the first generation, the second generation use is a drum brake for the parking brake. It has rear disc brakes for the normal brakes, but it uses the drum inside here as a parking brake, and then it's obviously got the disc here. Now that's an interesting situation. There's other cars that have this as well. Essentially, it is the same assembly as a drum brake, but I will take you through that. Now, there is no, I consider there's no easy way to put drum brakes together. There's a number of ways to do it that are out there. I don't think any of them that are, would consider easy. Probably you're going to make uh, an error or two that a spring will sprung or whatever it'll happen. And, and you'll, uh, you'll get it eventually. Just be patient. And the tools of choice that I use is I have a hook for the springs. You can use needle nose pliers. I'm going to use those as well for attaching these guys. And I'll talk about that a little bit here when I get it together. And uh, I do this for adjusting the uh, actual uh, attention on it will be when we put the drum on and for the adjuster that's on it that goes in, which this is the adjuster. I've, I've done the other side already just to get out of my mind, remember how to do it. The manual here doesn't tell you much. It has a little bit of an awful picture to show you. It still doesn't tell you really the best way to do it. It just says put it together. That's all you do. I did take some pictures back of when it was together. And by the way, you can see kind of what it looked like before. It's definitely cleaned up a lot now, no doubt. But anyway, you can't see in here very much once the, the drum's on to see what it looks like, but it, it gives you an idea. Essentially, if you've done a drum before, rear brake drum, you're going to know how to, how to do this. But uh, I'll take you through how they've set it up. The first thing I'm going to do is do the lubrication spots. I use uh, some brake lubricant. There's other types of lubricant people use for this. Uh, you can do your research on that. You're going to get a number of answers out there on the internet and a lot of people saying way to do it and way not to do it. I'm just going to show you what I do and take it or leave it for what it's worth. I'm not saying it's the right way. It's the way I do it and I don't have any problems doing it this way. So there's a few points that you got to do grease on and they're basically where the, where the drums touch and they're on this what I call a dust shield and there's a you'll see on a number of points here that I do and you don't need a lot of grease guys especially if it's brake lubricant you don't want it to spray all over um, it goes on well and and works fine the brake lubricant is really good for heat which there will be heat in here so um, basically I think if I remember right there's seven points or something there let me see one two three four, five, um, six, yeah, so there's seven points just on this dust shield to do, and then there's a few things on, on the brake itself, brake shoe, and, uh, you should do it where the tensioners all go, the adjusters. Like I said, you don't need much in here, so you just get it on there. Uh, don't forget where your actual, your, your brake cable goes as itself. It's a little bit in here. We'll get that in there, which is the notch that helps, uh, helps do some adjustment here. All right, so there's also this guy. So this is called the adjuster. You want to do the threads. You don't have to do them a lot, but again, do some of it. And of course, there's this pin that fits in here. 
and I usually just do the inside and then I'll coat a little bit of the where it goes in in that inside okay I am going to read you something for the manual I can do it from memory but I want to read it to you so you can argue with the manual but uh, it's about how these self adjust and when you put these in these adjusters so it says uh, install the adjuster so the shoe adjusting bolt which is this the shoe lifting bolt of the left hand wheel which is actually the wheel I'm on is attached towards the front of the vehicle so this is the adjusting bolt you can see how it threads out they want it when it goes on there to point that way to the front of the vehicle in contrary the uh, and the shoe adjusting bolt on the right hand wheel which is the other side uh, is towards the rear of the vehicle which would be like that just wanted to read that to you if you are doing this and following this uh, my disclaimer is this is entertainment but uh, in case you are doing it using this following this that's what the manual says I'm going to put this cable in and it goes in right here and there's actually a little bit of a I'll show you here there's an o-ring in here that seals it a little bit from dust and stuff getting in and water so that to get that in sealed and I don't want to put it in dry I, I just use some simple green as a temporary lube just on this and then I also put it just in there too and that'll help slide it in And that works like that and you can see where it came out here right there and I'll attach this in this side first but there's a little clip here to put in here and you can see I hope you can see that right there how this goes in and it goes in like that and then it'll hold the cable from ever popping out now that some lights on there you can see where I put the clip in and that holds this from coming out and then you got your parking brake cable like I said there so I usually lay out all the parts here kind of how I'm going to assemble them and then get to work on this car the first thing you got to do I think this has to be the first thing you got to do is attach the parking brake to the lever here and that's pretty simple to do this is the parking cable cable just uh, pull the spring back you can see how it fits in and you notch it in there then release the spring and then it, it sits in there and then that that'll end up going in there so then I'll uh, I'm just gonna start by putting this shoe on first so these uh, this is a hold down pin and a hold down clip for your brake shoe and these are interesting to put in and and they go through the holes here and you'll see how I do that First thing is you got to do is put it through the back side here of the pin. Okay, I'm going to take another pair of needle nose pliers just to hold it. There, that's done that. There is a spring that needs to go after the brick shoe. So let's put this in first. It's actually for me, if you're right handed, it's easier to do it on the other side, to be honest. There's a spring that goes in between the brake shoe and the hold down clip. This is where I use any of those pliers. So this is going to be the easier one to do because you don't have everything all lined up right now just to get this in. And that clip went. So let's grab the next clip and we'll gather that one for when we do the other side. This is why people hate doing this. Of all the way things that people invented in making things easier I don't think this was the best design my opinion anyway there okay that's in got this one in we'll put it where it needs to be there that side's in now all the work on the X side let's move you so the hold down pin I'm going to put on this side now 
like this. So, there's the spring when I need it. Now, before I put that in, I'm going to put this in. That's your adjuster. And it fits. There's a notch in here, and then there's a notch there. And that's how that fits in. And then there's a spring that goes in on there as well. Okay, it blew apart on me. Swear number, how many? I don't know. I really don't like doing this. Trust me, it's not fun. Now, let's put this spring in to kind of hold it together. Put this spring in. Okay, let's get this in. Okay, that's in. This is called a strut, and there's a kind of a rectangle spring that goes on it as well. And you, you set that in there. And it goes in, so this, the spring is on towards the front, and, uh, and it says L on it for left, by the way, and the other one will say right on it. There, kind of sprung together. Let me show you what I've done so far. So you can see how that's put in, and then I showed you that earlier. You can see how this struts in there, and the spring, and how it goes fits in the notches. You can also make sure that this notch, the parking brake, is sitting in it as well, kind of back in there if you see it. And then you can see under here how that fits together on the adjuster. So next we're going to put the springs in here to hold it all together. And there's a little plate here you got to put in first. Okay. Now there's a colored spring and a non-colored spring. The colored spring goes on, we'll call it where the e-brake lever is, which is the back side on this, which goes like this. They got different tensions apparently, even though they, well, this one's a little longer, you can see. And you got different tensions. Just make sure you get it right. I will read, in fact, I will show you what the manual says. The load on the respective shoe to anchor springs is different, so the spring in the figure has been painted. The figure shows the left-hand wheel. For the right-hand wheel, the position is symmetrical. You can see that the painted one is right there, that little bit there is where the lever is for the, for the emergency or parking brake as well. So that's what I'm going to do there. So I'm going to put this side on first. This is where I use my little hook. And you should be wearing safety glasses, which I'm not. Take the next spring and put it in here. And that's together. Just have a look to see if everything's assembled and where it needs to be. First thing I'm going to do is look at everything and make sure we're good. So next is to do an, on your adjuster to adjust how it fits on the drum. Because you want to obviously put, the drum's got to fit, but you want your e-brake to actually engage too. So see how that slides in real easy, which is fine. I'm going to adjust that adjuster bolt to be a little wider. So what I'm going to do is put the bolt out, which is moving out the shoes to the point where I can't get the drum on. And then I'll shrink it back in. And actually, it's pretty good right there, probably. I'm going to try a little bit more. Yeah, let's see. Now it won't go on. Yeah, so it won't go on. So I've gone too far. And I'll just adjust it again. That might be a little too loose. So let's put it out again. All right, now I'm going to pull the parking brake up and see if it locks. You can see how I can still move this. Well, that needs to, to lock in. And as soon as I did that, the parking brake actually was stiff to pull up, which is great. That means it locked in and you see I can't turn it. 
If the parking brake is really loose, that means you don't have enough tension on it for the brake. So we're good there. So I think we're pretty good on the tension there. And just you don't want it to you don't want it to ride the brakes either. So there it is, assembled. If you want to see what it looks like. And if you want to see that where I was adjusting, it's uh, this wheel here. We'll unscrew that bolt. I feel a little drag there, but the fact that it goes on so easy, I think we're good there. That'll work. And I forgot to mention, because I just showed you how I set up the brakes and for the tension, but you also can put these on, these drums, disc brakes, and then there's a little hole. Let's put a little light on there. Let's see if you can see in there. There you go. You can use a screwdriver in there as well to do adjustment when this is on. I'm showing you the way I do it. Again, like I said, there's many ways to do this, uh, putting your, uh, your drum brakes on. I'm just showing what I do. We've got the parking brake set up. Next, we put on the disc brakes, which is a little easier. Now, um, I think you know how to put brakes on, so I'm probably just going to do the highlights of the brake as we, I go along. A little note on these guide pins. You're going to see the top one has a little rubber gasket on here. And the head is actually marked with a, an L. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's a, it's a written L. And the other guide pin has a G on it. And that's how you know the difference. And that goes in the bottom on each side. Look at it guys, the undercarriage is finally done. It took a few weeks obviously to do all this, but the results show that uh, being meticulous and taking your time, you get this type of results. Very happy, very pleased with the way it turned out. 
it gets done under here. Now the car is not complete to the perfection I want it to be yet. Yes, the undercarriage is. The exterior needs some paint correction I've mentioned before and a few little things here and there and the interior needs some work as well and we're going to get to that in some future episodes. So make sure you don't miss those by subscribing. Also, please share it with your friends if you could. Hit the like button as well if you appreciate this sort of thing. And until next time, enjoy every day and always make it right. I think Joe. Yeah. You're all friends.